The following is a Barrett Sports Media production. There are two sides to the broadcast industry, content creators and money makers. This podcast is for that second group, sellers, buyers, managers, anyone with an interest in business. You're all welcome here. This is Seller to Seller. Now, here's your host, Jeff Caves. Larry Rosen is the president of Edison Research. He co-founded it in 1994. He's been a primary force in building Edison up into one of the world's most respected survey research companies that specializes in media and election polling. Edison's best known as the company that performs exit polls for all U.S. elections for the national election pool. And they're well known for their media research series, which we have probably all seen, The Infinite Dial, tracking developments in digital media and share of ear which we'll discuss here with Larry, which measures all audio usage in the U.S., amongst many other things. I noticed in looking at what people are listening to, you know, sports is way down the list. And a sports fan and a radio uh, listener and a sports radio listener and a salesperson is like, everybody, you know, listens to sports on the radio or sports audio. You're kind of right in the sense that sports is uh, more of a niche topic. So, the numbers are, I guess, relatively small when you think of the totality of all audio consumption. So share of ear is measuring the total world of audio consumption. And you have to bear in mind that when we measure that, about three quarters of all the time spent listening to audio, it goes to music. People can put it on in the background. They can often do other things, even things that require thinking, um, you know, it's at your attention while music is playing sometimes in the background. Mm-hmm. So right off the bat, all sp- forms of spoken word audio are essentially in that other quarter of all consumption. And we break that down in four ways. There's um, what we call talk and personality, but very specifically separate from sports talk. Um, There's news, um, there's uh, audio books, and then finally what we call sports. And we make sure to be very clear, we're talking about both talk and play by play. And so when you take that total, total world, of audio. Sports is only about 3% of all audio consumption. That doesn't for a minute mean that it's small. Uh, there's a lot of audio consumption. You know, People tell us that they average about four hours a day of audio consumption. If you go inside the people who are using sports, they often are recording a lot of sports. Yes, it's a relatively small percentage of all audio consumption, but each percentage point represents a huge aggregate amount of listening. But um, you know, I think the thing with sports content is less about um, how much of the total it makes up and more about the intensity. Uh, to me, that's always been the magic of sports talk, but also for that matter, play by play is uh, that, you know, when people are listening, they are listening, mm-hmm. you know, they are. And, and thus, you know, advertisers have typically seen incredible results when advertising in that environment. Uh, it's very, very hard for us to measure. I'm asked this all the time. Can you measure uh, how closely they're paying attention? Can you measure the intensity of listening? And if I could come up with a methodology, to do that, <laughs> people just don't know. They don't know how to answer the question. We've experimented with different things. But if you could, I have no doubt that sports would be at the very highest, if not the highest, uh, with regard to the intensity of listening, the attention paid, et cetera. Okay, let, let me flip to a, something you wrote in Radio Inc. about how radio is playing to win listeners, get listening credit now. And as your words were that it's produced some boring radio uh, or boring audio in other cases. And I, I, I wonder where sports radio would, would fall into that. I mean, I can tell you that there is plenty of program directors that say, if you get off of the NFL track, you know, you get too far away from that. You better be coming up with a best of three list or something or or a personal antidote about a tragedy in your dramatic life to keep people tuned in. Uh, do you think sports radio could be falling into this boring trap or what, what's your take on this? Um, so that article was mostly about music radio mm-hmm. and how we sort of teach to the test. Um, and that's how business works. When U.S. News and World Report started, ranking colleges. And they made one of the key measurements, um, the acceptance rate. Colleges started going out of their way to drive up 
uh, applications so that they could drop their acceptance rate. It wasn't good for really anybody, um, but they were teaching to the test, right? They were saying, if US News and World Report says this is important, we will uh, change our policies to make that important. The, the famous example was the University of Chicago, a very selective school, used to have this very quirky, difficult application uh, with the theory of if you want to come here, you will put up with this and go through the steps of, of actually doing the application in Chicago. When that US News and World Report was ranking Chicago, they started dropping down the rankings because they were doing poorly in acceptance rate. And so they just changed and they got rid of that difficult, quirky um, application process and, and made it much, much easier so that they could do better. You, you do what you're measured for. PPM uh, isolated certain things that, you know, you, when you could see it so uh, with such granularity, oh, people tune out when we do this. People don't tune out as much right. when we do that. Everyone started doing the exact same things. In music radio, everyone started running their breaks at the same time. They started playing fewer new songs because the data showed that when you play a, a brand new song, even if it's going to be a big hit, tune out happens. And so my point was that this leads to doing the right thing for the short term and not necessarily the right things for the long term. Um, I believe some of that has certainly happened as well in sports talk radio. Um, you know, stick to the game plan. Uh, don't show any creativity, probably making it much harder for new talent to break out. Certainly exploring new things and trying new areas. The personalities who have really jumped out over the years have strayed away from just hardcore sticks and balls, play by play kind of discussions. Sure. But it's an, it's an experiment. And, and so it's, uh, it's a real challenge. People do what they're incentivized for. And if your bonus is based on your ratings this quarter, you're going to do everything you can to maximize ratings this quarter. My point being that that radio, not individual program directors, but radio needs leadership that says, we can't just think about the current quarter. We have to think about the long term. Okay. Let me let me pivot away from sports radio for a minute. Get into, you know, a lot of salespeople will say, well, you know, you need to buy streaming. We, we, you know, you need to surround the listener and all this, that, and the other. And you guys are tracking whether people are using traditional radio receivers, be it in their car, their home, mobile devices. And I'm wondering, does anybody listen to a radio? You and I would remember this, of course. And what age groups, you know, and what are the younger right. people really in, in percentage wise doing using to listen to audio? Right. So um, you have to break that down a bunch of ways. Uh, the over time, uh, the radio, the physical device, it has definitely reduced in its usage. Um, amazingly, we, when we started the Share of Ear project in 2014, uh, half of all audio consumption was happening on our radio, and only 18% was happening on people's phones. It's kind of hard to believe, but you know, 2014 is a long time ago at this point. Right. Uh, and smartphones were not really you know, in their full flower at that point. And we have watched year by year the gap between these two things. Uh, these two devices narrow. And in their most recent update, actually the mobile device finally surpassed the radio as a device uh, in terms of consumption. And it seems almost inconceivable that that trend will change. So over time, you know, it just passed it and it's going to pass it by more and pass it by more. And the radio receiver will keep going down and the phone will keep going up. That said, there's a lot more nuance involved here. In the car, listening remains overwhelmingly on a radio. Uh, very, very little streaming of anything, let alone streaming, of course, of radio stations happens in the car. There are use cases. I live in New Jersey. I grew up in the Chicago suburbs in 2016 when the Cubs finally, after a lifetime of <laughs> not making it, were in the World Series, then won the World Series. I wanted to listen to local sports talk from Chicago. Sure. So I, I went through the steps in my car of listening to the score uh, in Chicago using a stream. So there is some radio listening happening under those very particular use cases. It's outside of the car, in particular at home, where radio listening is transitioning. Still, the majority of it is happening on a radio. Uh, but if you isolate certain locations, certain times, formats like sports, the numbers are quite significant that are happening in streaming, uh, as at times up to 20 and 30% of the total. 
Well, it feels then that the the battle in the car to keep the terrestrial radio station alive is is the last act. If if that battle is ever lost, the terrestrial radio station may ex- expire at some point. There'll be a lot of real estate for sale out there in this country. Yeah, sports, of course, has always been very dependent on in-car listening. Uh, in diary markets, you still see it for sports stock stations. You know, now all Nielsen can tell you in PPM markets is, is at home and outside the home. But I think we know that for sports and sports stock, it's heavily, heavily in the car. The fact that there always have been radios in the car, and it's always been, at least to people in my age group, thought to be a very easy thing to listen to radio in the car. That doesn't mean anything is promised. Um, you know, there's no guarantee that the radios uh, will always be there or easily accessible. And I will say myself, I've gotten into rental cars where I simply cannot figure out how to tune the radio. Often it's a touchscreen thing where you have to tap through it or whatever. There's a lot of ink spilled in the radio industry about the uh, threat of cars not having radios or not having easy to use radios. And those are indeed significant threats. Radio has succeeded in large measure because it creates great content, but it's succeeded by having a a functional monopoly in a lot of locations. And that monopoly is breaking up everywhere. And the last place is the car and it's slowly breaking up there too. Yeah. So how about your share of your study when you talked about podcasting and its impact with 25, 54 year olds and that talk personality content listing you talked about, you know, shook up some folks that, you know, the majority of it, half of it's coming from podcasts. They're not going to radio. And so I wondered, well, I asked you about this. How about sports talk audio? Are they the 25, 54 year old adults? Are they going to pods or are they staying with radio or streaming? So here I have good news for sports talk radio, which is when you isolate that talk and personality category, the amount of listing total, not just 2554, that is going to podcasting, it has surpassed um, the amount that is happening to broadcast radio. I think that's pretty logical on some levels. I mean, most of the talk and personality content is either morning show stuff, which I think has largely stayed uh, pretty current and relevant, but the straight talk stuff is largely, you know, right wing conservative talk done by and seemingly for men over the age of fifty five, and so uh, you know, podcast I think has marched into the breach of that. Sports talk, a I think the over the air content has done a much better job of maintaining its relevance, and while there are great sports podcasts as well, especially for niche topics and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the numbers are much more optimistic for radio's hold on the sports audience uh, as compared to that talk and personality category. It's still much bigger. I think it's almost three to one um, on the radio for sports as compared to podcasting. All right. All, that's, all that said, no one should interpret what I just said as thinking that uh, radio, uh, sports talk radio stations, sports radio stations should ignore podcasting. I think it's a massive opportunity for stations to increase their inventory, but also to increase their connection to their listeners. It's far more than just repurposing what you're doing over the air. You know, it, there's people who are really into high school football. I would, I would get a high school, high school kid to fire up a podcast about every single high school, uh, team and just, you know, make that available. You create a training ground for future talent um, and inventory to sell. Um, And yes, it's a narrow topic, but those people are obsessed. And the fact that you're going to let someone else create the podcast uh, to serve that part of your audience that doesn't get enough service on your over the air product, I think it's crazy. So, and it's not that hard. It's not that expensive. And like I said, it's a great opportunity to develop more talent. So I'm hugely bullish on podcasting. I'm bullish on local podcasting. And no one, in my opinion, is better positioned to make that work than the local sports radio station. Larry, I want to get you to talk about AM and FM radio, their future, their current. You know, there's a lot of FM sports talkers that are getting pulled And they're going to these class C licenses or getting back into music and they're pushing sports talk, some into pods. You've got a lot of sports talk on AM. 
So I wonder what you think about, you know, the, the podcast play, sports talk ending up over there, because this youth that we talk about that is listening to sports talk audio, I think primarily it's because of FM that the sports yep. talk stations have migrated. Well, that'll age out. And, you know, at one point, where does that go? And so how do you see the futures of the the AM and the FM and, and what's going to be there? It is very hard to paint an optimistic picture for the future of AM radio. You know, in PPM markets, I I think it's like 9% of all quarter hours at this point are happening on AM, which means 91 are happening on FM. Um, the uh, And that would include the streams. Even the, the reach or cum of AM, I know, is south of 20%, which means over 80% of people will not tune ever to an AM radio station in a given week. And you can't just lay that on lack of investment or content. You know, there are just technological challenges. I mean, I'm well in the New York metropolitan area. New York has clear channel, uh, AM stations, mm -hmm. uh, old meaning of the word clear channel. And yet I can't hear hardly any of them. They're really, there's so much interference. There's so much problem with it. Like I said, I just really struggle to paint a positive picture. I am less negative than it sounds like your question implies about FM. I think FM has a long, long way to run especially when radio is creating um, unique, compelling content. And again, I think in most cases, sports radio is the best example of unique, compelling content that the radio is producing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and so um, I, I am optimistic about the long term for sports radio, for sports radio on FM. Okay, so Larry, one of your heaviest users of any of your research is our salespeople. This is a seller to sellers uh, podcast. And, you know, here we have a bunch of sports radio sellers getting hammered about their projections for 2023. The older salespeople or their more experienced ones have been drug into digital, drug into streaming, drug into selling Google AdWords, drug into selling um, anything but their over the air spots voiced by their morning guy, you know? Right. And so if you could help and just from your research side of things say, Hey, if you're going into 2023 and you're a radio seller in sports, if I were you guys, you ought to be thinking about this in selling and what you should be focusing on. Well, a, I want to comment how much I love your use of the word drug um, the, uh, at least in New Jersey, we would say dragged. So, uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that kind of gave me a smile. Well, of course, these old sellers need to adapt and change the game. My wife's a doctor. She graduated med school. It's coming up on 30 years ago. She's okay. constantly having to retrain. Guess yeah. what? You know, the medic, the medical world is constantly updating and coming up with new procedures and new approaches. And, and she is required by her license to engage in what they call CME, continuing medical education every year. Old radio sellers should not be exempt from that. And the excuse that this is how we've always done it or don't make me learn new things, uh, they should be required just the same to up their game. So uh, I, don't, I don't buy into just, you know, let's just do it the old way. The biggest issue with radio in general, mm -hmm. but it would be a bigger issue in sports in my opinion, is this sort of spots and dots, just take the ratings and translate them over to a cost per thousand and sell it, or how, you know, a cost per point really and sell it in, ra in radio. That's the problem. I mean, if you're selling sports radio mm -hmm. and not getting vastly more on a cost per point or cost per thousand basis, you're doing something wrong. No one listens the way sports listeners listen. I don't think there's any format that is going to produce a return on investment for advertisers like sports talk radio. And so anyone who's just taking the lazy way and selling on a cost per point basis is not getting the job done. You can find more information on Larry Rosen on LinkedIn. Please review and subscribe to this seller to seller pod. Pass it along. It's how we grow it. Email me, jeffk54 at gmail.com. With interview requests, you can check out Barrett Sports Media. Uh, dot com for my weekly sales columns and past pods and probably catch this as well. I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to Seller to Seller with Jeff
Caves. Each episode is available on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, the iHeart app, and most podcasting platforms. To stay in touch with Jeff, follow him on Twitter at Jeff Caves and read his sales columns on BarrettSportsMedia.com.